What's going on everybody? Welcome back. We're here. Sorry it took so long. I found myself accidentally on vacation. Uh, this is the Filmstruck Film Club and uh, I don't have my buddy Groot with me. So if this is the first time you're ever seeing this, it's because you love the movie we watched this week. And it's not because you're a member of our beautiful film club here. We're the Filmstruck Film Club where we watch a movie a week. Usually, at the end of said week, I'd be sitting here with my buddy Groot, and I'd tell you all about how I felt about the movie. But, like I said, I, I've, I've found myself accidentally on vacation, and can you sell us some food? Are you the farmer? Uh, yeah, we watched a fucking hilarious movie this week that somehow I had never seen before. Um, and if you had seen it, then you should have told me that I was missing out, because we watched Bruce Robinson's 1987 comedy classic with nail and i now this is a film that uh i i had so i have the thousand and one films you have to see before you die book great book if you uh if you're a movie nerd like me just have it on the coffee table but i had seen the photograph before from with nail and i because i was like oh look at richard e grant he looks so young and miserable <laughs> uh and so i that was it i was like oh there he is uh i'll find out what that is. that is someday maybe because I, I don't like to read the descriptions sometimes. I don't want to get it spoiled. I, I'm, I, I digress. I was listening to the podcast Smartless, which if you don't listen to and you like podcasts, you should go listen to Smartless. It's Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. But there was an episode with Melissa McCarthy, and, they, and Will was talking about her, the film that she was in, Can You Ever Forgive Me?, which also stars Richard E. Grant. And he said to her, oh, man, with Nail and I, that's my favorite movie ever. And I was like, whoa, okay, Will, it's your favorite movie ever. Let me go look this up. So very little research. I was just like, cool, yeah, that's the movie we're going to watch this week. And I'm so glad we did because it turns out it's a, a, a British film classic on the BFI list. It's like number 29 of all time British films. And it winds up on all kinds of lists of greatest comedies, greatest British films, and just greatest movies of all time. Uh, Cause it's just so offbeat, right? It's a uh, it's a strange little slacker movie before that was a thing, right? There there's there's elements of like train spotting uh, in this film, even like a little fear and loathing, which is all the more uh, apropos because the poster artwork, maybe you noticed, is the same dude that does like the Hunter S. Thompson drawing. So there's clearly like ah, that's an easy parallel to make. I even found it shared a little bit of like what makes Bad Santa good. <laughs> uh, it's just this very dark sense of humor that deals with, you know, alcoholics and people who have clearly let the party go on a little a little long. Uh, the description of the movie is great. It's, it's with Nail and I, so we know that there are two, two guys. We find out that they're out of work actors at the end of the 60s living in Camden Town in London, and uh, they accidentally go on holiday. They wind up at Withnell's uncle, Monty. Uh, they wind up at Monty's cottage. Uh, and they're like, they're just always looking for more booze. And they're clearly just like having withdrawals until they can get themselves some more booze. Um, yeah, I mean, Richard E. Grant plays Withnell. It was his first movie, I guess. He had done like one TV film, I guess, for BBC and then this. Uh, and what a, what a crazy fucker. <laughs> uh, I really found a lot of, like, Jack Sparrow, right? It was almost like Johnny Depp, as much as he stole from Keith Richards, he also stole from Richard E. Grant in With Nell and I. Uh, also, uh, Paul McGann, it was his first film, and he plays And I, uh, which in the script is someone named Marwood, but at the end of the credits, you may have noticed it's just dot, 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 And I is his credited name in the film. Um, and the uncle, Monty, is Richard Griffiths, right? That's his name. Uh, yes, Richard Griffiths. You'd, you'd recognize him in a heartbeat. And, you know, if you saw any of the Harry Potter films or one that I love, the History Boys. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, you know, RIP, he is gone. But he was magnificent in this With Nell and I film. I wish... I could watch it like a hundred more times before doing this video so I could just do a rapid fire of like all the great lines that I loved in it. Obviously there's the classic, we want the best wines known to humanity and we want them here and we want them now. 
That's a good one. Um, Any time that Danny, the drug dealer, is talking, first of all, maybe you recognized him like I did from Wayne's World. <laughs> That's how I know that guy. Uh, but when, any time he opened his mouth in this film, he's just so, oh my God, what's that thing he says? Uh, if I spiked you, you would know you'd been spoken to. I fucking love this guy. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it's not really about anything. I, I watched it with uh, with the people I'm staying with, and you know, the first two minutes, it was like, what the hell's going on? And I was like, I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna find out, but if I'm not mistaken, these are two guys that are waking up and need a drink. And they're just actors, so it's easy for them to jump to characters and whatnot. Um, but yeah, Bruce Robinson is the writer and director of this film, and he is an actor in his own right. He was in Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet. Uh, and apparently he had some like pretty uh, pretty questionable uh, run-ins with Zeffirelli. I guess a lot of a lot of the and I character and uh, Monty in this in with Nell and I. Um, there's there's a lot of like uh, you know and I. I'm gonna call him Marwood just so that sticking with with how it is for those that know. And if you don't know, like I didn't, uh, you you know who I'm talking about the guy that isn't with Nell. Anyway. He's like kind of running away from Monty this whole time because Monty thinks that he's interested. Monty is a homosexual and he thinks that maybe and I is interested. And of course he's like, no man, shit, I, I don't, I, I'm not really into that. And uh, so from like a first time watching it, it seemed like maybe a little outdated comedy uh, kind of came off a little homophobic. And then luckily for me, I watched an interview with Bruce Robinson and Richard E. Grant. They they spoke at a, like a Q and A after a screening of With Nell and I at the British Film Institute, and um, Bruce Robinson kind of talked about how he had he had heard like that people found this film to be kind of homophobic in in parts, and that he in watching it in 2017 or whatever he could kind of see what they meant. But he was also like that was definitely not what I was going for. In fact, a lot of that whole uh, experience in the film is based on his real experience with Zeffirelli. I guess Zeffirelli actually asked him, are, are you a sponge or are you a stone? Which then, of course, Monty says to uh, Marwood in the film. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, you know, it is, it is what it is. It's like, it is a time capsule. It's a period film of, of the 60s from the 80s. And now here we are, even 30 years removed from that. So, uh, you know, take take from it what you can and if 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 it if it's not for you it's not for you that's okay um but yeah i i couldn't i couldn't help but uh just i loved richard griffiths in it so i i i like felt for his character and that he was just misreading signals and and so i didn't take it so much as him being this like predatory uh gay man who's like gonna sneak into your bed and fuck you know all that stuff but there is a little bit of that happening. I don't want to harp on it too much, but um, because most of the film is about, the, or not about, but dealing with kind of how these type of characters, these like people who almost choose to be bums, it's not really a fair way to put it, but uh, you know, the, with Nell in particular, thinks so highly of himself and is always so mad at like when other actors are getting work and just thinks everyone else sucks and like. Uh, he's just very full of himself, uh, thinks very highly of himself. He doesn't try. He doesn't fucking do anything. He, all he's ever trying to do is get more and more and more fucked up, even, even in like a com competition. When Danny the drug dealer's over there, he's like, I could take double what you could take and all this stuff. And it's, yeah, so clearly priorities are not uh, in, in line, really. Um, but... Yeah, I digress a little bit. There's there's another thing that I found out about this film that cracked me up is that there's like a famous drinking game that goes with this film where you try to keep up with with Nell, and I guess when the uh, the lighter fluid part happens, you either do like a shot of 150 proof rum or whatever. <laughs> uh, there's also so many great things behind the scenes. Speaking of that lighter fluid bit, they had rehearsed it with water, and then the director put vinegar in the in the bottle. So the shot that we see in the film. His reaction is having a sip of vinegar and thinking it was going to be water. Uh, seems like there was a lot of uh, playing about that was happening on set. Uh, it's another thing when, you know, Bruce Robinson being a, a performer himself, 
almost like a sadistic, tyrannical, like wanting to get the real shit out of his actors and, and how <laughs> fucked up that is. <laughs> and But how much, I, I mean, obviously it paid off because it's like, this is a cult classic. I watched, there's a documentary available. It's short. It's like half hour long called Whip Nail and Us. And uh, it's the director and the stars talking talking about the film, but also there's like fans of the film that that talk, and they they mention that they've seen the film upwards of like 40, 50 times and can quote it endlessly, and so it almost feels like a British like Dumb and Dumber, right? There's like a huge cult following, at least in the states, of like people that love Dumb and Dumber and will quote it endlessly, and and this kind of feels like that, but because it's British. <laughs> Uh, it has this darker underbelly than like a Dumb and Dumber. It's not so stupid, right? These are very, <clears throat> these are very smart guys. And they just, it's the end of the 60s and they clearly have partied a little too much. And so they, it, it does kind of finish a little bit more melancholic than the rest of the film would have you think. Um, but yeah, just to kind of briefly spoil the ending, it is nice at the end watching uh, Marwood, the and I character, kind of getting his second chance and once he books this this acting role he kind of we see him at the very end he's got a haircut he looks better than he's ever looked and he's kind of put together and he's going to go get on the bus or the train or whatever to go do this this acting role that he's got and with Nell, of course is just like trying to be that misery loves company still and it's like he's just offering a bottle of wine on the way there and he's like clearly about to cry the whole time and then he does that beautiful shakespearean soliloquy at the end to the rain and yeah, I was just really stunned and taken aback and like I'm a huge fan now. I'm going to watch it a thousand times and quote all the lines and you know, I'm 30 years too late, but it doesn't matter because this seems like just the kind of movie that people will continue to find and continue to fall in love with and continue to quote endlessly. And uh I just love when Oh man, the last little quote that I'll leave you with when Richard E. Grant turns around and he has that like piece of pie in his mouth and he's like, "What fuck I said that?" and that's that huge guy comes over what my acquaintance must have meant. Oh my God. I wish I knew the quotes more. Anyway, uh, yeah, watch With Nell and I if you haven't. And for those that did, what did, what do you, you know, how great was this? Comment, let, let me know what was your favorite, what's like your favorite line or your favorite scene from this film? I would love to know. Put it in the comments. Uh, go ahead and follow us at Filmstruck Film Club. We're gonna have, you know, this, this film took a little bit longer to get the review out. This, we almost watched this for about two weeks, but you know, We'll, we'll keep it up. There's always a new movie on the horizon, and tomorrow we'll have a new one. So keep in touch. Um, let me know what you thought of the film, what, you, what you're thinking about the club in general. If there's stuff that you want to see, let me know. We'll put it, we'll put it up there. Um, really hoping to be joined by Groot next week. You know, we, we love Groot, so we'll have him back. But, yes, with Nell and I, holy cow, I'm so glad we watched it. But mwah, much love, everyone. We'll talk soon. I think that's everything. Otherwise, you know, see ya.